Hi, I'm Preston DeGuys, and this is part four of the Networker Architecture Basics series. This video collection is designed to help you understand the fundamentals of a networker operational architecture, and it's designed for people who need a bit of an introduction into the various aspects of a networker solution. Ideally, you should have watched parts one, two, and three before you watch this video. This isn't meant to be a replacement to formal networker training but it can be used to give yourself a bit of a head start with this awesome backup and recovery solution. In parts one and two, I covered zones, hosts, operations, and targets. In part three, I covered save sets in the networker databases. Now it's time to pull everything together with an actual operational configuration. So let's start diving into what's involved in getting a networker backup configuration. This has some interconnected parts, and one of those parts is a group. So I want to introduce the concept of a group first, then I'll circle back to the rest of the configuration. In Networker, a group is a collection of data sources, such as clients or virtual machines. In essence, it's just a membership list. The group can either be statically or dynamically defined. Static groups are a bit more traditional. A static group is where you explicitly add each member of the group into the list of its members. So you'd manually go through and select each client that is to be part of the group. A dynamically defined group is where Networker evaluates the membership of the group when it's used. Traditionally defined clients can have tags and you can build a dynamic group of traditional clients by configuring a group to automatically include clients with a particular tag, such as gold underscore production. You get to create whatever tags you want. You can also have a dynamic group based on virtual machines. In that, Networker evaluates rules that you establish to indicate which virtual machines should be included in that group. When we configure automatic backups, they're performed against a group which can have one or more clients assigned to it. It's one thing to define a list of things that you want to backup, but you'll also have to define your backup policies as well. So let's look at the policy engine in Networker. So from Networker 9 onwards, we have a policy engine as the centerpiece of a data protection configuration. The policy engine lets you define a backup configuration that more closely matches what you might expect to see in a service catalog, gold production, silver development, bronze testing, and so on. So let's look at how these different elements in a policy layer together before we then dive into them. Within Networker, you'll define one or more policies. In fact, when you first install Networker, it will automatically create policies like gold and silver for you. Within policies, you use workflows. Each workflow will be associated with a group, a collection of data sources, such as a list of clients. The workflow will have one or more actions assigned to it. An action executes a specific operation against its data sources. So now let's break this down a bit more. At a high level, a policy is a collection of workloads, workflows that you'd logically consider to be similar. For instance, if you follow a classic service catalog model, you might have policies of gold, silver, and bronze. They don't have to be that, of course. If your business has data protection service catalog options of tier one, tier two, tier three, and so on, you can create policies named like that. The key thing is that from a logical configuration perspective, each workflow within a policy should have a similar value to its data to the business. As I mentioned before, a workflow is associated with a group. A workflow runs a set of one or more defined actions against the members of the group at the time that you configure it to execute. Two common techniques for configuring different workflows are based on separating start times or different backup types. For start times, you might set up workflows for backups that start at 9 p.m., 11 p.m., and 1 a.m., for instance. If we look at the different backup types, you might define within a gold policy, for instance, workflows for file system, database, and virtual machine to handle the backup of each of those different elements. 
Now, all of those backups can go to the same location, of course, or the same target, but there is often a lot of difference between, say, how an Oracle backup is treated versus a file system backup, even if they both get gold level protection. In part two, I described how Networker can perform different operations, like backup, clone, and so on. Well, an action is a specific part of a workflow that performs a specific operation, such as a backup, against the data sets that it is assigned to. I'll explain why I'm saying data sets and not clients in the next slide. That action can have a lot of different configuration options, such as whether to retry a backup if it fails, how long the backup should be kept for, what storage node the backup should be directed to, and what pool the backup should go to, and so on and so forth. In the previous slide, I said that an action is performed against the data set it's assigned to, rather than saying it's performed against clients. Now, when an action is performed as a backup, it's performed against the members of the group assigned to it, which would either be traditional clients or virtual machine clients. So in that sense, a backup action is definitely performed against a collection of clients. With cloning, it's a little different. If you put a clone action in a workflow after a backup, then the clone action takes as its input all the backups or save sets that completed successfully from the backup action. So to say that again, a clone action that follows a backup action will take a list of save, successful save sets as the source for its action. If you have a workflow that only has a clone action in it, and this is permitted, that clone action will take as its input group either a hard-coded list of save set identifiers, so a static list, or more likely a query that identifies save sets that should be cloned that is, a dynamic list. So let's revisit that basic backup flow that I showed in a previous part. The networker server has a scheduling system in it that regularly searches through the policies and checks for the start times and auto start status for each of the workflows within the policies. When it finds a workflow that is due to be executed, it starts the workflow. The workflow starts its first action. So when we previously said that the networker server tells the client to do a backup, what it's actually doing is starting the backup action for the workflow that's being started. All of the elements here, clients, workflows, actions, policies, and so on, are all in the networker configuration database. When the backup completes, Networker starts the clone action for the workflow to generate the second copy of the backup. When the workflow and actions are run, the details associated with their execution are stored in the jobs database. When the backup is done, the client file indices and the media database will be updated. When the clone is done, the media database will be updated again. The NMC database will maintain some statistical information about the actions performed by this networker server and any other networker server that it manages. So that's it for part four. Thanks for watching. Don't forget you can check out the blog for more details, and if you're after a comprehensive understanding of data protection, be sure to look for the second edition of Data Protection, ensuring data availability from your favourite bookseller.